there. It's cold, but see there's no excuse for hibernating. I mean the place called Eternal Spring. Look around, yeah sure. But for all the winter thrill this place can offer, as well, let it be an eternal winter wonderland. Suffered from a successful automobile industry center status, Changchun is often mistaken as a sole industrial city and skipped by many winter thrill seekers. But as a matter of fact, Changchun is covered by more than 35% of grain in and around the city, fairly high by Chinese standard. It's also known as City of the Grain. So for nature-minded winter travelers, so far still less touristically exploited Changchun could be an even better choice than many more established winter destinations. Attitude-wise, Dongbei is the answer of Nordic countries in Europe. If Chinese flee in Santa, he will most likely come in from here. Could that be the reason these two remote parts of the world start teaming up? Sweden and Changchun? Frankly, I find it quite surprising, especially in this scale. Collaboration between Swedish Sport Foundation and Changchun government brought some world top cross-country skiers from all over the world here this time. The competition is called Vossalopet, a Swedish sport tradition with a history of more than 80 years. Over the years, it has developed into the world's biggest cross-country skiing competition and started to be held in countries like USA and Japan, now in China, and it's Changchun. After the professional skiers dashed out for their 50 kilometers journey and lost in horizon, the 500 meters competition for kids started to take off and drew even more cheering and support from the crowd. <laughs> The last of five meters is always the most difficult. The true spirit of Vasa Lopet seemed to reflect something rather Swedish. Challenging to herself, not comparing to others. Here is not a winner takes all competition, more a everyone takes part in kind of game. No surprise, the five-fold World Cup winner, pretty boy Jens Svartel from Norway, succeeded defending his title. Unlike ping pong, obviously our Chinese ski athletes still have a long, long way to go before they could pose any real threat to their Swedish counterpart. And actually, many of these enthusiastic participants were first-time skiers. That looks tough, huh? I know something much easier and more simple for me. Jingyuetan Natural Reserve Park is one of the best winter resorts in northeastern China, collectively known as Dongbei Area. This resort has emphasizes on family-friendly skiing and has been an especially effective draw to poor people from all of China. Personal instructors are available anytime when the ski ground is open, but most parents seem to believe their mental and physical support works better on their kids. Most Dongbei cities has ice sculpture exhibition as almost obligatory activity for winter's festivity. Changchun takes a slightly different approach. Can you see? There's a fantasy white forest. I'd better book a time with my dentist before I take a bite on this. Unlike those snow sculptures, they just look like ice cream.
Snow sculpture can be seen as hard to polish, as detailed as ice sculpture. I don't think so anymore. Heilongjiang, Liaoning, and Jilin provinces in northeastern China are collectively known as Dongbei. Changchun is the capital city of Jilin province. Commonly, the name Dongbei conjures images of rich land, lush forest, cold and long winter. It was a stereotype of Dongbei I came to experience, and what I thought was what I got. Motorized ways to explore the wildness are still most common here, but I felt few free vehicles are most suitable for a place like this. Maybe out of a kind of oxygen overdose, I felt almost hypnotized by the woods. It made it difficult to remember the so-called real world outside. If you want, you can always take even smaller routes and explore by foot. It's hard to imagine these are not naturally grown trees. We have those who've planted most of them 50 years ago to thank for. Today, their efforts start to pay off. Forest this old has all the attributes of the natural forest. For travelers, even better, it's easier to explore on one's own. The sound of drumbeat and cream balls blaring from afar is always a good sign because this is a folk dance mostly played for high occasions like festivals, anniversaries, and in this case, look like on the way to a wedding ceremony. Dongbei is one of the most important origins of this widespread, cheerful form of dance called Yangge, Chinese swing dance. It said the younger dance was originated by imitating plowing rice in a field and celebrating harvest. So it became the trademark sound of joy in the countryside. It has also spread into the city parks and evolved to be a kind of popular morning exercise for pensioners. They may not be the best dancers, but that was younger show was fullest of flavor I have ever seen. Such blissful sound and movements can only be coming from a sense of true attachment to this land. Country living is hardly idyllic in real life, but it does give you a sense of gravity and make one feel more rooted somehow. A feeling of ease that could be difficult to experience in a rush city life. Isn't great with TV. I just teleport myself to another dinner table. It might look authentic to you and rustic, but I can tell you it's actually just a restaurant in a busy city center of Changchun. It's just in a village style. Anything you see here, only thing authentic might be this one. A homemade liquor. Percentage 42. Time to have another good dinner. Cheers. 
Maybe now it's time for the countryside influencing the city. The local kimchi, you know, here you definitely allowed to drink it loudly. I can do this though. My stomach is full, the bottle is empty, and really getting warm and cozy and tired. Modern Changchun is like China's Detroit, one of most important industry-based automobile industry. But walking inside the busy center, it's not very noisy thanks to all the trees. It's such a green city. Modern Changchun is a relatively young city. Some oldest worth mentioning architectures are from Japanese occupation time, from 1930s, when Changchun was set up to be the capital. Of the so-called Manchuria, a colonized puppet state, actually reigned under Japanese military power. The overthrown emperor from China's last dynasty, Asenjiro Puyi, lived in the so-called Manchurian royal palace as a puppet emperor for more than 13 years. Some parts of Bernardo Bertolucci's Oscar-winning movie about him, The Last Emperor, was actually shot here. I had to admit, the latter was a much more intriguing reason for me to visit this place.